Hi, this is a quick recording just to show how I set up this uh, animation workbench scene. So I've got it busy rendering here, so you can sort of see um, as I change things how it impacts the um, the rendering. And um, I'm going to just work through some of the settings that I did here just to see how they um, work together to create the, this effect. So let's just first describe what's happening here. First of all. We are iterating over the countries of the world and we're taking the outer perimeter of each country and uh, sort of tracing it in with this white line. At the same time, as, the, as we move to the country, you'll see that this, the fill changes to this sort of glowing white, uh, which sort of eases in and out after a few flashing moments, then it sort of goes to the solid white. Um, at the same time, we've also got this label displaying and the label animates um, sort of Getting, uh, it only comes in after five seconds of showing the country. The idea is if you try to guess the name of the country while you wait for the label to show up. And when the label does arrive, it sort of pulses uh, bigger and bigger and bigger until it eventually almost sort of fills the screen up. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, let's see how we did that. First of all, let's look. Um, we've got two layers active here. The one is the country's layer, and that's just the background. It's just um, the same layer that you get if you type world in the um, little easter egg here uh, in QGIS. And the thing is I've reprojected it to this ESRI 54979 which is the I think it's the Patterson uh, world projection. Um, and then this second layer is the same layer but then there is some uh, rules about how the rendering happens. So let's go and first look at the, the styles that I've done. So I've used a rule-based uh, renderer with, only because I want to sort of dynamically filter the um, features that get rendered. Um, and I could have done it in various different ways, but I just chose to use a rule to do it. So basically this rule says that if the hover feature ID matches the, the geometry ID of the current feature, then render it, otherwise don't render it. So none of these others are getting rendered from the country layer, except for the one that the it, the the animation is is iterating onto. Um, okay, so that's the first thing. And then we've got the symbol here for this uh, rule, and uh, the symbol is com uh, the symbol is composed of. Um, uh, I don't know why this layer is even. Let's see. Yeah, it is used. So it's composed of two parts. The first part is the gradient, and you'll see that um, I'm using a gradient fill. And let me just scroll down a bit here. Um, most of the options are just pretty straightforward things. I've got a uh, using the object coordinate mode, which means that the gradient is relative to the geometry of the country. I'm using a radial gradient, so it sort of starts in the center and radiates out. Um, and uh, the reference point is 0, 0, 0.0, which means that. The reference point is outside and if you imagine a box around the feature the reference point is here at the bottom right hand side of the box or maybe it's the top left hand corner of the box and then it goes out from there so um and then you're using this pad spreading which stops it sort of reflecting off the edge if it reaches the edge i think so so that's the um the gradient for which is pretty standard except you'll notice that i'm using a um uh, value-based uh, data-defined override here for the one color. And if we have a look at that, we'll see that there is an expression, but the way that I did the expression is I used the ex this assistant here. And what I did was I put in um, the hover frame as the value domain. And I just want to show you here that in the animation plan, um, I'm hovering for eight seconds per feature. So, and I'm doing it 30 frames per second. So that means that um, uh, at eight seconds, um, the value range for um, the, the hover frame will go from zero times eight to eight times 30. Yeah? So um, what I'm doing here is only for the first um, 50 frames of that, I could make it a different amount. Um, of that um, eight seconds, in other words, the first one, uh, almost two seconds, um, I'm busy changing the color, starting from um, 
this sort of uh, that's actually an inverted ramp so it actually starts from the green and then works its way to this white but it's a bit hard to see on my screen here but it actually does that through a transform curve as well so that um, you, that's what makes the color sort of pulse in and out as it's busy drawing it let's just wait for the next one to come in and see so you, you'll see that if I um, if I manipulate this line here, for example, moving this endpoint up, it will change the way that the last um, color gets rendered as you need to get a bigger country so that you can actually see that. Okay, so you can see it. So like that landed up a dark green. If I wanted to land up with a white, so it's actually not an inverted one, then I'll end it at the bottom of the ramp, which is basically this side. If I end it at, at the top of this line, it will end up at this side of the ramp. So it lands up with white, it starts off with white and goes through sort of different greens and then gets back to white. Um, yeah, so this principle of using the assistant and building a transform curve is kind of something you'll see that I repeat in different places in the uh, development of this uh, scene. And then um, if we go back to the, the next layer, this one over here, you can see that I'm using a geometry generator and the geometry generator is what's creating this like painted outline effect. Let's wait for another country. We need a bigger country than this one. Um, uh, it goes, um, it starts at the, at the beginning of the outer perimeter and then it's the paint its way around the edge. Um, and to do that, um, provide an expression that looks like this. Um, I'm just going to explain a little bit what the expression is doing. Just zoom in a bit here. Okay, so um, so what it does is it first calculates the exterior ring. Now in some countries which are multi-part countries this probably will fail and then that's why you'll see that the animation doesn't go to every single country in the world, it just does all the ones which have got a simple exterior ring. Um, and basically calculate the exterior ring and puts it in a variable called full line and then it uses a very nice function here called line substring which returns a set of the um, perimeter um, starting from a start point at some distance along the outer perimeter and then ending at another um, point which you specify. So um, that takes the geometry, it says what, what line should we calculate the substring from, which is, so we wanted it an exterior ring and we start at the beginning and then we calculate the distance along the line as a proportion of how far through the animation we are. So when we're at the last frame, hover frame for this, um, for this feature, we'll have drawn the full length of the line and then we at the first will be um, almost drawing nothing. And this little thing of uh, five, six lines basically creates that effect of um, drawing in the uh, drawing in the outline of the um, feature. So I'm actually just going to cancel here quickly so it doesn't see the whole render flow and I'll just start it rendering again so you can sort of watch in the background while I'm explaining. Um, so that's the one part is this um, geometry generator which then uh, renders along the edge of the every boundary and um, uh, the rest of this is just simple straightforward um, gives it a, a simple line renderer and there's no other special magic for that then the last thing to show is the labels so what i wanted to do to do was to show the country for the first five seconds of the hover and then show the label for the last three so that you've got five seconds to try and guess what the label oh what the name of the country is i think the five seconds may be still too short but <laughs> i'll play around with the numbers to to get different um uh, to find where the sweet spot is for doing that okay so to do the labels what i've done is um i set a rule here um, and again, let me just try to zoom in here a bit. So the rule says basically if we're on the hover, current uh, feature that's being hovered over, and if the frame is above 150, so um, that means that 5 times 30 is 150, so it's 5 seconds basically worth of frames. Only once they've passed, then we will start to display the label. So that's the first criteria that we had. Um, and then the next thing that I did was I 
used uh, again the assistant here to do the size of the label and it's a very similar approach to um, uh, how I've done the um, uh, the color bouncing in so but this time again it might be a bit hard to see on my screen but there's a curve that goes like this so basically it looks at the domain it says only start from the 150th frame of the current hover and then go to the last one which is 240 for that for the eight seconds and uh, across those values scale the label from 10 all the way to 550 pixels uh, or points whatever it's measured in um, but this thing sort of says bounce that size like make it bigger and then a little bit smaller and then bigger again and smaller and then right up to the full size of 550 and that's how we get this sort of like bouncing effect over here and then the rest of the labeling properties are just pretty straightforward things i've done uh, um, a call out it actually doesn't even it's so big the label it doesn't even draw the call out I played around with uh, doing some uh, uh, algorithm based placement but uh, it wasn't really needed in the end um, and that's it so it's actually very very simple um, and just to, to walk through what I've done in the animation plan here I'm using the planar mode so that will basically zoom um, on a flat map to each place, one feature at a time. I've specified the, the current country as the, um, the layer, which is the layer which has got all those effects defined on it. Um, I've set the zoom level like from global down to this, uh, what is it, 55 million or 5 million, which is actually too um, zoomed in for some countries. So that's why you'll see some of them sort of clip on the edge, but but um, sort of it's fine enough. And then I'm just doing a, a quad based zoom easing, which basically just governs how the zoom behavior works. And there you can see my 30 frames per second. It travels for five seconds between features and then hovers for eight seconds on each feature. I also set up a couple of images, one for the intro, one for the outro, and then I added two sound tracks. This is currently broken, but the idea is that it should be concatenating the two sound tracks together. Um, but it's uh, yeah, like I said, currently broken. And then I'm doing it 720 deep, uh, 720 P for the output. And uh, the whole thing generates 29,340 frames and probably takes um, 10 minutes or so to render the whole thing. Um, and at the end you get a video which is basically showing each country uh, drawing it in nicely around the, the edge like that and then sort of glowing it as you get to it. So that's my walkthrough. I hope you um, enjoy watching this. This is mainly just for Jeremy to go and document um, the process in a, in um, our training, uh, the tutorials. But um, I'll put it on YouTube in case anybody wants to see um, how I did this. Thanks for watching. Cheers.